Hi. We're going to start with showing you a movie of ours. It's so beautiful. <laughs> This started for me and Therese in 2005, almost nine years ago. There was this law introduced in Sweden making it mandatory for all children up to 15 years to use bicycle helmets. And there was a big debate going on whether this law should include also adults. And we didn't use bicycle helmets then, and many people with us didn't either. So we thought maybe we have to see ourselves if we can come up with something that would make people start using bicycle helmets by free will instead of law enforcement. And, and that was our starting point. In Sweden alone, 30 people are killed every year in cycling accidents and around 30,000 are injured. Every third person who gets injured gets head injuries and that is of course the most severe cyclist injury. But even though people are quite aware of the risks in traffic, the vast majority are choosing to go cycling without any head protection. We also wanted to see if we could improve safety aspects because traditional helmets aren't actually that safe that people think. Um, and um, that was actually not our main focus from the start because we wanted to, to just come up with something that people would use and that would be good enough. Um, but we would come back to that. So, uh, when looking at uh, the number of different cycle helmets on the market, you can see that they all look very much the same, all conventional helmets, and the producers of helmets have been using the same kind of materials, the same kind of production methods for ages, and that has resulted in, in a lack of variety. Uh, and uh, these are all pretty much based on sports cycling. And that was something that we questioned. Is bicycling a sport? Uh, the answer is no, it's not. To most people, it's just a way of transportation. It's a way to get to work or to school or to go to the grocery shop. And most often in those situations, you're not wearing a training suit. You're wearing your everyday clothes, anything from jeans to maybe a business suit. And for that kind of everyday cycling, there was no good, good alternative for head protection. But the first thing we did was a questionnaire. We asked people on the streets what they thought about today's helmets and what the problems was with them. And these are the answer. They're difficult to bring. They're only bad looking ones. They mess up the hair. No one else has it. They're expensive. The cap can't fit underneath. And you're laughing. <laughs> but um, you should take vanity seriously because it makes people die in traffic. And um, it's never the people that needs to change, it's always the products. So we wanted to take care of these problems. So what did they want? Here's some quotes from the same questionnaire. Like a good looking hat with built in helmet. Small and foldable so you can put it in your pocket. Or with the possibility to change the look, like with mobile phone shells and wigs. Invisible. This was the best idea to us. <laughs> we wanted to make an invisible helmet, so we came up with an airbag helmet. Something that would come up if necessary. So we contacted airbag industry because we figured out we would, might need some help with the technology behind this product. And they said to us, your problem is not the airbag system. What you're trying to do might be impossible because no one has ever done it before. In cars, you have the chassis around the person that you're protecting with the airbag system. In this invention, you will need to have the person itself finding 
the abnormal movement in the accident. And we can't help you with that. You need to start with the algorithm. So we did. We collected data, body movement data from thousands of real bicycle accidents, the deadly serious ones, we crashed as dummies, but most of them with real people, men and women, to collect how you move in bicycle accidents. We also collected hundreds and hundreds of hours of normal cycling and what we call also extreme normal cycling, which is pick up keys from the floor, running in stairs and other sneeze, uh, body movements that you do when you're cycling and the airbag shouldn't inflate then either. And then our mathematicians, which we had to employ of course, um, found this method to divide these two categories, the accidents from the normal cycling, and that's the algorithm. The airbag itself uh, turned out to be also kind of a challenge uh, because compared to the airbags that are in cars, ours needed to be more complex. Uh, as you can see in the video, uh, our airbag is shaped like a hood. Uh, so we need to find a really complex 3D structure and a very special folding inside the color in order for the airbag to inflate correctly around your head quickly enough, uh, cover as much of the head as possible. We needed the pressure to stay inside for several seconds. Uh, and since the airbag was placed so close to your body, we needed to find a gas inflator that was not using pyrotechnics as they do in cars. So we had to find a so-called uh, cold gas inflator which is not using pyro at all, it's using only compressed helium gas. And the ergonomics, of course, everyone looks different from each other, so we needed to make this airbag system ergonomic for the user and nice to wear, whatever kind of size you have. And we ended up with the different sizes of the actual color that you wear. The textiles and electronics combined was also quite harsh actually to solve because we needed a user interface that was going to show the user whether this color is on or off. And when it's on, you're protected, and when it's off, you're not protected. And uh, yeah, we'll show you later. So these guys uh, we're quite familiar with. Uh, many entrepreneurs are. Uh, when developing something radically different and new, you will always be facing a lot of skepticism. Um, these are the people who will tell you that what you're doing is impossible, um, because it will, if it was possible to create, someone else would have done it already. Um, they, call, they call themselves realists. And they ask you to be realistic and uh, quit before wasting too much time on this project. Um, the sad thing is that these people are often people in powerful situations, powerful uh, positions, and they are really in a position where they can influence and they can make a change, but they choose not to. Um, uh, we have. Uh, oh, raised sorry. a lot of venture capital, so being in the world of, of venture capital, we have met uh, a lot of these guys um, from the last slide. Um, it's especially come there, I think. And the funny thing with, with venture capitalists is that they are not so much about venture at all. Uh, they, <laughs> they should call it something else. Um, they, they want to make safe bets. They want to invest in things that are familiar with things that they have already invested in. Uh, we've actually many times heard them saying to us, you know, I don't know how, where to, how to categorize your product. Is it IT? No, not really. Is it Meditech? No. Um, sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> so the product is so radically new that they can't label it, and they see this as a problem. <laughs> so we have uh, put a lot of time and effort into finding uh, the kind of investors that 
are not scared to question how things have been done in the past, uh, but are curious enough to, to actually uh, invest in the thought of making the impossible possible. So you can take care of this while I'm showing you the product. This is our invention. And I hope you will hear the on-off signal. This is the on-off button. Did you hear it? Did it? <laughs> and now you see the LEDs showing the battery level and you need to charge it with a USB cable every sixth week. And now when I've stopped cycling, and I know that I'm, I can take it off without inflating it. And I have also... <laughs> And we have these different shells as well. So these are washable and you can change them to different styles and climates and weather and with cooling system inside for hot countries like yours. <laughs> um, black ones, paisley pattern and so on. So Airbag helmet safety compared to conventional helmets. Airbag has actually the best shock absorbance capacity in the world compared to conventional helmets. It has a much larger protection area, as you can see. It can withstand multiple impacts in one accident. The inner and outer airbag diminish head rotation, and the airbag stabilizes head and neck in the accident. And then the benefits of wearing a collar around your neck instead of something on your head. You get no helmet hair. <laughs> you got the different shells for different styles, climates and weather. It's easy to fold and bring in your bag. It works with, with a hat. It's very discreet. So does it really work? People ask us. We've been on the market for two years, and yes, it works, but we will let someone else speak for us. Hi, I got hit by a car a couple of hours ago. Thank you, Hövding, for making this the most pleasant crash I've ever had. 